My name is Charles Counts. I'm here in a very temporary workshop in my father's house on Oak Ridge Highway. I have with me an assistant named Ed Smith who's pretending that he's my apprentice. We're going to give you the basic shapes for making pottery. The first thing you have to have, of course, is clay. I put some clay down so I could do this, just so you can see how graphic clay can also be. And I should do this. One, nine, nine, four. That will date it. This is July, isn't it? July, 1994. When you start to make pottery, the most important thing to have is a good clay body. The potters in the past used to come here from Europe and they settled. They wandered the landscape until they found a clay that seemed good to them. And then that's where they settled. The potters used to go where the clay was. Now, in modern America, the clay comes to the potters. This uh, little exercise is called wedging. And usually we have a special table made up for wedging. But since we're sort of improvising, we'll wedge on the wheel head. Oh, Mr. Counts, she said, I didn't know you wedged on your head. I said, yes, it's a part of my yoga practice. To stand on my head and wedge. <laughs> this, of course, is called the wheel head, the potter's wheel head, right here. And I like a wooden one. Most institutional wheels have a metal ones, but the metal sort of grinds on your hand. And I just prefer a wooden wheel head. You have to have a good piece of wood to do it. A nice piece of maple, laminated by an expert craftsman. Now, for these exercises, I want you to get about a half pound of clay. Not too much. Maybe I'll make these a little bit bigger. These are a little bit bigger than a half pound, but they're going to be more or less the same. So I'm going to do the first four exercises with these. And with this lump of clay, I'm going to make a pot. These are not pots. These are exercises. But uh, hopefully, in this clay, there'll be a pot that we all maybe want to keep in fire if we're so lucky. So you store your clay at your reach. Make sure you have the area where you're putting it a little damp so the clay won't be, this one already wants to be on the wheel. When I started doing this in about 1959 professionally, every time I would wedge one of these things up, I'd sit there and think, oh, that's a dollar, and that's a dollar, <laughs> and that's a dollar. So I worked sort of by the numbers and made 250,000 pots in about 10 years. Uh, but I said that last year at the university. I said, oh, you know, how long does it take to be a potter? I made. Uh, 250,000 pots to start with, to learn, and the professor says, yes, and what did you do next week? The next week. <laughs> Somebody always has a... Okay, the tools. The hands are the most important tools. First you have the clay, then you have the hands. The hands are the most important tools. I've never argued any otherwise except this. This tool was whittled out by my father out of a piece of walnut. It's called a rib, and I put it where the water is because it floats. This tool is a shaping tool, so when you're making a pot, you can shape it like this, and it doesn't grab on the wheel head. If you had a rectangular piece, you would come down like this, and that end would hit first, but you have to cut it this way. This one is for shaping. I call it the right-hand tool. This one is the inside tool and it's for shaping and it's following essentially the shape of your hand without fingers and it's got a gentle curve for making curved pots. I put it here on the left. Got to have a wire handy, there's a good one. Here's an even better one. The way you twist the wire is very important. I've tried all kinds of wires. See how that one is a little I even I tried a string 
one day, wax linen. But my preference is still the wire, twisted wire. Fine wire, stainless steel wire, if you can get it from a surgeon's supply house. That's what they put bones together with. Stainless steel. Now the first exercise is called step one. You've got to get the clay centered. Make sure it's well. Oh, I forgot to mention the knife. Got to have a knife somewhere. I'll put it here. First exercise, step one. Not yet quite a pot. Got to get the wheel going. The wheel going fairly rapidly. And then center the clay. Friend says, oh, centering. I see. Centering is something that the clay does. That's right. <laughs> You have to negotiate with the clay, get it to be where you want it. So the clay is essentially centered. You have a what some people would like to call a birthday cake shape, like a layer cake. You're going to have one. So centering, then you open the clay down to the thickness of the bottom and pull it toward you for opening. When you get the bottom made all wide, very wide, and get the wheel going again, get some good speed, and make sure you have a very well-constructed bottom there. A good foundation makes a good pot like that. Now I'm going to recenter like this. Pressure one, two, three, four. One, two, three, four. And the left hand is the guide. Gently toward the center. Undercut the base. Make sure the top is running true. You've got to have a sponge too. I forgot to mention the sponge in our beginning. Keep the water off. Make sure it's running true. Then you're going to pull it up just a little bit of a cylinder. Not much, just a little bit. This one, press out from the inside. Make it straight. And while that's in your hand, Go ahead and cut it. Cut it like that. Nip it. So that's practice for trimming, you see. So you already have a kind of basic shape. It's got a good bottom, a good trimmed edge, and a good rim. That's the objective of step number one. Walk your hands under it. If it's well thrown, the pot will stay pretty together, pretty much together. If the clay's too wet, it'll be like picking up a fried egg <laughs> or a very thin pancake. That's the first step. Usually takes people about 40 hours worth of uh, trial and error for that. When you're learning the craft, you don't sit down and work, 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 work. You practice about 20 or 30 minutes every day on the skills. And something marvelous happens after you've practiced. You go to sleep at night, and your brain coordinates all that effort that you made. So you're learning while you're sleeping. I never thought that was true until recently. And the more information we have about learning, the more that's been corroborated. OK, center. It's not a wide base now, you see. It's a narrow base, like a doorknob. Step two, open it. Widen. One of the first questions that people ask you, if they haven't seen pots, maybe they say, oh, do you know what you're going to make before you start out? Well, sometimes we, we don't really know what we're going to make. But most of the time, if you're going to be a really good craftsman, you have to know what you're doing. So I'll give them a sm smart remark. You ask me if I know what I'm doing? Is that what you ask me? Do I know what I'm doing? Well, when it comes to step two, I bet you I know what I'm doing. It's got to have certain, certain characteristics. When you get to the rim, press down and make it a little thicker. That was about two pulls. I'm going to give it the wooden rib, push it at the bottom very firmly. Narrow base, coming up with a straight line, come to the rim. When you get to the rim, don't destroy it. You could, but don't. Hold it like that. Now we learn to use this tool. 
Now we're learning how to use this tool. Take the rim, insert the tool, and ask that shape to become curved. Let it become curved, just the same curve that's on the edge of the tool. So you've taken a straight-sided shape and turned it into a sort of graceful curve, hopefully very graceful. Am I talking too fast? Maybe I should slow up. This little bit more clay is better than yesterday, isn't it? Mm -hmm. It's giving a more definition of the shapes. And I haven't thrown them in a long time. Maybe my skills are coming back, you reckon? Hey, Papa. Yeah. Are you still there? I'm here. I'm, I figured out I still know how to do this. Thought maybe I'd forgotten. Okay, second shape. Third shape. Third shape is going to have a narrow base and it's going to go out like this. If you think of these pieces as exercises, then you don't get too attached to them as pots that you're going to take home and eat your cereal out of. Think of them as just warming up exercises. Center open widen. When you open this time, not too wide. But then immediately press all the way to the thickness of the bottom. Now I know the camera's not picking that up. We need a mirror. But uh, when I finish this shape, I'll show you what the bottom looks like. Recenter the clay, make sure it's under control. Undercut the base. Reshape, reshape the rim. I like the, the kick wheel because I like the silence of it. I like the way you sit on it. I like the way you have to use your body. If you sit over a motor five or six hours, you begin to feel tense because all that electricity is running through you, too. I don't know if I can prove that scientifically, but it makes me tired to work on an electric wheel than it does a kick wheel, especially if you're making rather small pieces. Now, if you're going to make great big pieces, you need more power. But there's an enormous amount of power in the school now. Enormous amount of RPI, right? What do we call it? RPI, rounds per instant. And what do you call it when things go round and round and round and round? I don't know. Skating on thin ice. What Miriam Kohler used to tell me about her childhood in Finland when people went out to do their baths in the sauna and the children were taught not to far, uh, travel too far away from the bat bathing place because they might fall through thin ice. <laughs> anyway, it's got a vertical shape. I'm going to ask it to get a little taller, this is step three, a little taller. When you get to the top now, don't destroy that rim. Well, you'll recognize this as what the British call a plant pot. <laughs> In Tennessee and Georgia, we say flower pot. You want to make a flower pot shape? It's a flower pot. A plant pot. Oh, yeah, and I introduced this first use of this right hand tool. You don't have to do too much shaping on this shape, so. But you have to get used to holding that in your hand. Never allow these to become scissors. So one either leads or the other follows. So you get used to using the tools on both tools together on step three. Not much to do, but there you are. While this one is still in your hands, go ahead and trim the base. Trim it off neatly. <coughs> and you've already got a good finish on the bottom. It won't require too much trimming. I watched a uh, Japanese potter make a shape very much like this. And he took the rim and a piece, a beautiful piece of bamboo. I don't have a beautiful piece of bamboo, but I've got this sharp knife, and I'll just split the lip like that. And 
And I thought, aha, that's a very zen thing to do with clay. Very zen thing. Especially with the plant pot. It can be... Of course, you know, in our civilization, our culture, in this hemisphere, the world goes this way. But in Japan, the world goes this way. So here was my friend, Kinoshigi, doing this to the edge of the pot. So I always, in, his, in memory of him, I always turn the wheel the other direction when I do this. Now, you could also apply a little of the decoration if you want to. You do something like this. These have to sell for two cents, so you don't want to put too much blood into them. <laughs> two cents. Two cents plain. Now, look at the hole in the bottom. <laughs> we see you. <laughs> <laughs> enough of that. Enough of that. In Nigeria, it's the funniest thing. It said, uh, uh, baboon to work, the monkey they chop. <laughs> baboon, baboon to work, the monkey they chop. So, that worked. Yeah, what are you looking for, Papa? Some place to put that? No, I need a rag right over there, but I can't read yeah, it. Yeah, we got it for you. Right there it is. Thank you. Now, we've got stair steps. Step one, step two, step three. Let's see what we can do with step four. See if you can get it to be a little taller also. But there's another problem with this exercise. You've got to have a broad base, as you had in step one. So keep that in mind when you start at the center. <laughs> the baboon, they work. The baboon is the one that's out working. The monkey is the one that's stealing money. <laughs> if you say the, bab the baboon, they work, the monkey, they chop. They chop means uh, eating food. Eating food. <laughs> or stealing. Stealing something so you can chop food. Interesting language, isn't it? Interesting use of language. That, of course, is Pigeon English. Pigeon English. Spoken all over West Africa and brought by the earlier people to the Caribbean and to the North American continent several centuries ago. How many centuries ago was it? Well, before my time. I wasn't there, so I didn't know. That's what one of my students in Africa said. I wasn't there, so I didn't know. But we can't get by with that because they're history books. So you'll be, you'll be sent to the shelf to read a little bit of history. Pottery history is very interesting because if you can find traces of pottery, then you can begin to tell what kind of life people lived. And guess what is the most used material cultural object for archaeologists? Clay pieces, because the clay, fire clay doesn't disintegrate like reed baskets or skins. So pottery is one of the oldest crafts known to man and it's also the craft that tells very, very, very much about the culture in which the pots were made. The Greeks always were asking these classical questions. Who are we? Where are we going? And what are we going to do? And when you study ancient civilizations, don't you know where they come from? <laughs> Where did they come from? I said, he said, jump back to Orange Fork. Come from the Gulf. North Fork of the Holston River. Isn't that right? That's the Garden of Eden. North Fork of the Holston River. <laughs> and where is Noah's Ark? Where was Noah's Ark? In the middle of the Sahara Desert. <laughs> Started out dry, and after the rains of this week, we can say that Noah's Ark is floating down Peachtree Street in Atlanta. I just see pictures of Peachtree Street in Atlanta. Floods, floods everywhere. Anyway, here we go. Shaping, 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 right down to the bottom, right down to the bottom. I think the North Fork of the Hoshin River is 
garden, it's the place where the Garden of Eden was. It's where everybody originated. Generation after generation. Make sure you get all the water out of the bottom. That'd be nice and dry on the inside. I've done a, a little careful work on the rim so that you don't want the rim to be too sharp or the clay would become too easily chipped, but you want to be able to drink out of it without feeling as if you had thumb in your mouth. So let's check the side walls. Did I pass? Pretty good. Pretty good for a beginner. Now, Ed, you have that piece of paper. And I'll move this, this direction. Workshop of my father. My father makes leaves. He's 94 years old and he still makes leaves like that. Except I messed this one up because I put clay on it. Well, It'll wipe it off. Won't hurt it, will it? Why, well, no. Why, well, certainly not. I've got one over there, so I've to make a bigger print than that. <laughs> when I came back a couple years ago, I used this as my logo. See the leaf? That's the logo for the New Beaver Ridge Pottery. Now I've got a large lump of clay centered on here. The question, Papa, the question is, do you believe there's a pot inside this hunk of clay? Is there a pot in there? I'm taking your word for it. <laughs> <laughs> You're going to take my word for it, aren't you? Well, I really don't know, to tell you the truth. What I do know is sort of like going out to the river and throwing a fishing pole line and a Hook. You put worms on your fishing poles? No, put them on the hook. You put them on the hook? Okay. <laughs> okay. So when you when you go fishing, you you have to have the right you have to be at the right time at the right place with the right bait, huh? Is that right? Yeah. I'll hook and I got a big bite of a big fish. But the dead gum thing it's fighting. It doesn't want me to pull it in. How am I going to pull this fish into the boat? Let it keep on fighting. It'll give out, Rick. You think it'll give out before I give out? Hmm? Who's going to win this battle? This pot is wobbly, too. It's not perfect. It's wiggling like a biggest fish I ever caught. Anyway, this pot shape I made yesterday, I'm going to try to do another closed form. And it's not going to be so easy because this is a hula dancer. A hula dancer wants to dance. She probably is dancing on the wheel. It's not totally in control, but I've got most of it together, so let me see if I can keep it going. Of course, I could quit right here and say that's the way I wanted it, but that's not the way I wanted it. <laughs> I want to close it all the way up, if I can. Think chief, we're gonna be able to pull this in. Uh, you. Where you, can. you will. <laughs> Are you gonna put that in writing? Hmm? <laughs> My grandmother was here, his mother, when I first started, and she was babysitting uh, up on the ridge with not with any children, but with the pottery. It's a Christmas, and we'd advertise for a Christmas sale. My wife and I had to rush off somewhere to the grocery store or something. My grandmother was there and she said, we came back directly and she said, well, he, she says, Charles, she says, you've got all these pots made, uh, made up. you got them all made up. Now, why don't you just go out and get yourself a job? <laughs> you can sell these pots. You've got so many of them made up. Now, why don't you just go ahead and get your job? I didn't argue with her. I thought, well, she ought to know that this is my job. This is my job. Now there's a reason why I'm trying to get this organized like this. 
I'll show you just in a second. You don't run out of film. Here we go. Now you have to get, I want to get all of the water off of that, off of this piece. So that when I expand it in a minute, it will. And if, I've learned a trick that if you can push the base in a little bit, it seems rounder. So one, two, three, here we go. I like it better blown up. What do you think about it, young lady? Mm -hmm. It's mm -hmm. beautiful. Not too bad. Do you see mm -hmm. air bubbles dancing around on the surface? No, I can't see them from here. I do. Let me see if I can get some sort of completion on this. Well, that's the beginning of the first lesson. The first lesson is like that.